Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. So, Raiders got blown out. That was pretty awesome. Pretty pumped about that. Sorry all you Raider fans. Um, great episode today. 13 questions will be answered in the next couple minutes. We got a very special wine from California that we'll get to in a second. But before I do that, I was looking at some numbers last night. And you know what I realized? And I also bumped into some customers on the floor on Saturday. There's a lot of you who are still not commenting. So, today, you have to comment if you've never commented before. Come on, I want to see you. I want to see you say something, comment on the wines, ask me what you want, a question answered, maybe you want to see a wine tasted, do something. I bumped into five people on the floor on Saturday at the store that said they've been watching but haven't commented. And then I looked at some numbers, and the viewership is growing. We're almost at about 10,000 unique viewers every day. So WLTV is really starting to grow. I really appreciate it. I think the Wall Street Journal brought a lot of new viewers. A lot of you have not commented. We've got our set base of people commenting, but I want more comments, please. So if you never viewed, you have to comment or you won't be able to watch WLTV anymore. So the wine. Very nice wine from California. This right here is the Ridge 2003 Zinfandel. Independent School is the name of the single vineyard. The special wine. Very interesting little wine. This is 88% Zinfandel, 9% Carignan, which is a great little grape, and 3% Petit Syrah. So it's a nice little blend, but because it's more than 75% Zinfandel, they can call it Zinfandel, which is what they chose to do. And it's 15.4% alcohol content. So... We're talking about a big boy. I decided to do one wine today because I am answering 13 questions and we didn't want it to be 600 hours long. So I'll taste a whole bunch of wines tomorrow. But I'm telling you right out the bat, I mean this is crazy. I really want you to see this. This is really, really, really dark stuff. I mean pitch black, the best way, you know, just amazing color. And the aromatics are exploding on this. The reason I decided to show this was I got the taste this a few months ago and we jumped up on a bunch of it. We thought it was even better than the Lenten Springs, which has always been our favorite wine from Ridge. Very jammy, blackcurrant richness on the nose. Even a hint, actually a very powerful hint of blueberry, which, you know, we have not mentioned a lot. Just you don't get that flavor profile on the nose quite a bit. I enjoy it quite a bit. Real nice. This is what we're talking about. This is a very unique bottle of wine. Anybody seeking out New World flavored wines with a lot of power and a lot of complexity, and I mean even like the New World Syrahs from like Pax and that whole gang, Clomimi, Cinquanon, but if you're a true fan of Martinelli or Turley or all these big, high alcohol, powerful monster Zins, you've got to try this out for two reasons. One, it packs a load, a huge amount of fruit. Asian spice is really obvious as well, which is really nice when they integrate that way. Tobacco, tons of it. Even a little hit of Tabasco on the finish, a little of that spiciness, a little black pepper, but tons of blue fruit, black fruit, and at 15.4, you would think that the palate would be very hot, but it's not, and that shows how much complexity and richness is in here. We've talked a lot about Ridge in the comments section on Wine Library TV, and I gotta tell you, this 03 independent school is one of the finest $25 to $30 bottle of California red wines that I've tasted in a long time. I'm really blown away by the complexity of this wine. I'm stunned by this effort. Huge nose. This has been open about two, three hours. Clove and mint on the, on the nose as well. This would go great with hanger steak. If you've got a lot of spicy, if you like Thai food and you're sick of drinking Gewürztraminer or Alsatian crisp white wines and you want a red, this is the kind of red that will match up great. The spiciness and the flavor will easily integrate with the heat. So this is a very diverse wine, something you should definitely seek out. Anybody on the West Coast should go to Ridge and ask to try it at their uh, tasting room. Hopefully they show it. I don't know if they do or they don't, but this is a winner. So let's get into the question and answer portion, which we've got a lot going on. Douglas says, here's a question for you. What is the best approach for attending one of those super tastings like you are sponsoring? How can I get the most value for an event like that? Doug, best thing I can tell you is 
people come there all the time. We're on our fifth or sixth year on the super tasting, and people come in and they see all the wines and all the food and all the friends and all the hoopla and all the fun, and they just go wild. They just start going randomness. We have a book that shows which wines are being poured. The people that really have the best time get there, grab the book, sit down or go in the hallway or go to a corner, spend 25 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and circle and attack what they want to taste. So, composure. You know, like Eric Mangini teaches the New York Jets now. It's about composure and preparation. That's how you win games. And I'll tell you, that's how you win the super tasting game. You walk in, you stay calm, composed, don't let the hoopla get to you, pick the wines you wanna go taste, and they'll attack those tables and try the wines out. Carl S. says, how can anybody reasonably taste an array of wines at a tasting where there are a thousand wines? Even spitting can't handle anywhere near that number. Carl, you are correct. I highly recommend against trying all 1,000 wines that we show at the Super Tasting. The best plan of attack, again, is similar to the question we just had from Doug. You really gotta pick and choose your spots. I mean, hopefully you can come every year. Some people come both nights. Well, that's why we do Monday and Tuesday, so you could do that as well. But really comes down to, and this is where I really highly recommend so many people go and not cherry pick, but go after all the expensive wines and want to taste all the expensive wines. And that is definitely a way to play it. I mean, obviously, this is a super tasting and there's a lot of great $100 wines and you want to try them. I highly recommend that you seek out the gems and the different things you've never had. Everybody runs to try the Dominus's and the Bordeaux's and all those kind of big wines, the Gaia's and the Penfolds. I recommend staying calm and trying different things. You know, try a bottle or two from each table of wines you've never had before. This is your opportunity to try so many different wines you've never had before. So that's the plan of attack. Whether it's our super tasting or all the tastings around the country that people are going to, don't try the most expensive stuff. Try things you've never tried before. You may open up a world of wine that you've never realized existed. Maddie Van has a lot of questions. Heat and its effect on wine storage. Tomorrow, Finally, I will be unveiling my plan for the heat episode. I think you're going to like it. I'll show you what I've got up my sleeve. It's right over there, but you can't see it yet. And I'll talk about that tomorrow. What temperature is safe to store wine at long term? Will 75 to 80 degrees harm wine? Maddie, I feel that the right temperature is between 55 and 68, 65. Obviously, the colder it is, the longer the wine will mature. So if your wine's at 65 and you're cellaring it, and the same exact wine that you bought, you cellared half that is 55, the one in the 55 will probably last between five and seven years longer on a 40-year aged wine. So all the warmer temperatures do is speed up the process. 75, 80 might be pushing it a little bit too hot. That would concern me. I mean, I've seen cellars at 75 and tasted great wines that have been there for 10 years. Again, wine is much more resilient than we give it credit for. And it's really those 90 and 100 degrees shock waves that can really affect the wine and make it leak. So 75 to 80 might be a little high. I like the 55 to 68. Does humidity really make the much difference in cellaring, I assume he's asking, as long as the cork does not dry? Isn't it fine, right? Maddie, yes. The composure, uh, excuse me, the uh, humidity is really to keep the cork you know, moist and so it doesn't dry out and so the air gets in and really spoils your wine. So humidity is really in place for the corks. Tips on apartment cellaring and storage. Again, we'll be doing that in a future episode. Sorry, Colin. Decanting, what bottles, how do I know, and how long, how do I know how long? Maddie, I think if you go back to one of our episodes, I'm a huge fan of decanting. I would decant everything. I know I don't always do it on Wine Library TV. It's really more or less because there's usually more bottles. I was actually going to decant this. I do keep it open for three or four hours. Plus, this is how I'm used to drinking wine. And I'm not enjoying a full bottle and really getting into it. This is really more for work. So had I been doing this at home, I would put in a decanter. So I decant everything. The bigger and more complex the wine is, the longer you want to keep it. Nothing can hurt it. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12, 19, 23, 29 hours, fine. You know, obviously an $8 Chianti, an hour or two should really do the trick. Do you really know? No. But does anybody really know? You know, so, you know, let's move on. I answered five questions for Maddie. Uh, e says in his long discussion, anyway, the Gabbiano was a result of a winning bet for an unspecified bottle of pizza wine, which segues nicely into my question. What do you go for? for either pizza or tomato-based wines. E, most people do Chianti and Sangiovese and want to keep a traditional Italian. I don't go that way at all. I found through many experiments that Cabernet Franc and Rioja are the best way to go for for tomato-based foods, and that includes pizza. So, 
Remember that Chinon we had a few months ago on Wine Library TV? That I drank a lot of times recently with pizza. I'm a big Cap Franc and a big Rioja fan. The Spanish Rioja is a little more old world, goes really nice, you know, an old world Rioja, really nice with tomatoes. So if you want to try something new, which I know a lot of people have not done Cab Franc, try the Cab Franc pizza suggestion. I think you'll like it and it'll make me look good, so I appreciate it. The Italian Stallion asks, love that name by the way, he's a great guy, he's emailed me a couple times separately. Italian, what's up buddy? Have you ever rated a wine 99 or 100? I have, and there's even one on the website right now. And I'll have a link to it down below on today's episode. It's the 99 vintage Dal Forno Amarone. 100 points, folks. One of the best Italian wines I've ever had. The only problem is, it's like 300 bucks plus. Let's move on. Joe says, Gary, wonderful salute today. Nice touch with the 2000s. You had so much fun and delight in drinking the 2003 Leoville Lascasse. I have three precious bottles. If you only had one bottle of this wine, when would you consume it? Today? Will it get better? How would it? When? Blah, 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 blah. Joe, I would never have the 2003 Las Casas if I had it for myself now. I mean, it drank amazing. I mean, it is great stuff. But this is the kind of wine you want to put away for 15 years minimum. I would probably try your first bottle in 10 because I know you don't have the patience to wait. But I would say 15 years, 25 years, 30 years. I know we, you know... Considering the events that we, you know, uh, remembered yesterday, you, you never know what's going to happen in the future. So I would say five to eight years won't be criminal. I would really recommend trying it in ten years. And once again, I'm going to say this right now, and I'll go into the next questions. If you drink a wine that you have a case of, and you pop it open, and let's say it's five years down the line, and you love it, don't think it's going to get any better. If you like the way it tastes now, then drink it. Come on, let's not make this too complicated. You like it? Drink it now. The Las Casas I loved, but I could just tell it was going to get better. And so I wouldn't have opened it now. Matthew L. says, I always have questions, but here's one that's popped in my head. For the person just beginning to appreciate wine, what would you recommend buying? Cases or just purchasing many different wines one bottle at a time? Matt L. Many times on WLTV I brought this up. Honestly, I would drink a bottle, different bottle of wine for the rest of my entire life. Buy a different bottle for life. I mean, you find something you adore and can't live without, fine, buy a case. But I'm telling you, mix it up. I mean, that's what the flavor of wine is. You gotta try different things. So my recommendation, especially in the beginning, those first four or five years, every time you go into a wine shop, do not buy a case of wine. Buy 12 different wines every time. And you know what? For as long as you can go with that route. Pan Man says, why do you have five or six corks in front of you, but you only tasted three wines? He's referring to yesterday's episode. And I did that just to make sure if anybody was paying attention. And many of you were. So I appreciate that. Those are course from wines I tasted earlier in the day. I like to play little games with myself on WLTV. And I like that catch. Good job, Pam. I enjoy Wine Library TV and I find it educational. This is Pan Man again. What is your opinion on wine tasting schools? In, partic in particular, Kevin Israelis. Have you ever considered holding wine tasting classes at Wine Library? Yes for Wine Library. We're working on that right now. What do I think about them? I think real life experiences are better than classes, but you have to get some education. They were better about 10 years ago where that's the info, but now you can go on Google and get everything you know. But Kevin is really great. As a matter of fact, two people are going to his school in our establishment right now. Many of the people at Wine Library have gone there. Let's move on. Hal N says, Gary, when buying futures, what is your recommendation on what to buy? I would diversify from a personal drinking seller, but as far as investing, should one concentrate their money on a couple of wines or a few select high-end chateaus? How? I look at futures like I look at real estate. Buy the max of what you can afford. Even push yourself. Every time somebody's pushed the envelope on buying futures, they've always looked back and loved it. You know, people who bought $30 bottles when they could only afford $20 bottles are now having $150 bottles in their cellar. So, I recommend sticking to the top stuff, the highest rated, the most pedigree, the big names, and push your envelope. Don't buy other wines and buy the most expensive futures you can. You're going to always win. Next, Tim F. says, what do you think of Domaine Chandon going to bottle caps on their sparkling wine? Tim, I think it's cool. Let's try different things. I think it's cool. It's going to be a fun experiment. Let's see what happens. I think it's pretty rad. Captain M says, is Barbaresco wine comparable or similar to Zinfandel on our side of the world? Cap, no. Zinfandel is very big fruit like we tasted today. Very round and luscious and sugar oriented and tons of berries. Barbaresco is much more old world, a little bit more soil, much more about, you know, the earth tones and the vegetal aspects. You know, there are some fruit, but this is definitely the way to go. Um, and finally, Captain M says, will you someday feature WLTV tasting on Robert Mondavi's Opus 1? Yeah, we'll probably taste it. 
question of the day, because the light is blinking, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to finish this episode without the tape running out. So I'm cutting a couple questions short. We'll do it next time. Today's question of the day. I'm going on a restaurant tour in 2007. What is your favorite restaurant? And tell me what city it's in. Maybe I'll meet you there, and we'll enjoy a Wine Library TV episode together. We'll see you next time.